All right, so here we are on the inflation tab, and we're asking how much does inflation in the U.S. predict U.K. inflation or vice versa? And we'll take the same cross-correlation approach we did and talk about the, um, the issues with it later. Uh, so just like the previous sheet, the data table starts in A50 with the inflation rate all the way back in 1775. Again, uh, the data source is listed in um, cell T1, etc. Um, and then the U.S. inflation rate is in column B, and the U.K. inflation rate is in column C. And we're computing the cross-correlation function uh, in uh, that table with lags in column G starting in uh, G8, I guess, and um, cross-correlation in H8. So let's plot that along with the um, rough guides to uh, statistical significance. And we see um, a cross-correlation of about 0.46 at lag 0, and that's the largest of the cross-correlations. Um, it's not exactly left-right symmetric, but it, it kind of dives both for positive lags and negative lags. Um, so uh, the question is, um, how much can we trust this? I mean, it certainly seems reasonable, um, but uh, is there much of a link between U.S. inflation and U.K. inflation? Um, or do they each just kind of go on their own and is what we're seeing kind of a statistical just have, um, coincidence? So to get an idea of that, we can look at the autocorrelation function of U.S. inflation and the autocorrelation function of U.K. inflation. So I'm going to expand the graph over into columns K and L. And we see that um, the ACF of the U.S. inflation rate um, uh, and uh, ACF of the UK inflation rate, of course, they're perfectly symmetric left right around a lag of zero, um, but at a lag of one, they're correlated at like 0.6. At a lag of two, they're correlated at, um, well, 0.6 for the US, uh, for the UK, um, 0.39 for the US. At a lag of two, the UK inflation rate is correlated at 0.25. Uh, so there's some autocorrelation going on there. And uh, on the next tab, which is called AR but not cross-correlation, we demonstrate what can happen if you have autocorrelation within each time series but no other relationship between the two. Um, so again, if we scroll down to A50, we have time 0, 1, 2, 3. Columns B and C, now we have uh, columns of uniform randoms. And then I'm simulating data series in column D and E to just be AR1 processes, um, and they just use uh, values from B46 and C46 um, to, uh, to multiply the previous time value by, that's our A1 coefficient for each, and then add some normal noise. And you can see that the formula in column D involves stuff from column B, but not column C or F or E. The column formula in column E just involves its related stuff in column C, not anything from time series one. Um, so these are two uh, time series that are each autocorrelated but have no input from one to the other or vice versa. And right now I have the AR parameters, the A1 set to zero. So these are just white noise processes. Uh, and if we graph them against, uh, graph them both against time, we just see kind of random jitters up and down. And the cross-correlation function, uh, again, starting in like G8 or so, um, it, uh, it bobbles up and down, but it's usually between those uh, kind of uh, upper and lower significance lines. So uh, let's generate a few more of those, uh, pressing F9. Um, and it's, the cross-correlation is pretty much staying within those uh, rough significance guidelines. Every now and then it goes outside. That would be about one out of 20 or 5% of the time because um, they're kind of like a 95% uh, confidence interval, roughly. Um, but let's go put a autocorrelation of, let's use 0.9 for one of the time, uh, let's use 0.9 for both of the time series. And that's in uh, B46 B and C46. And now, um, we see that when a time series goes above zero, it tends to stay above zero for a while. When it goes below zero, it tends to stay below zero for a while. And the cross-correlation function uh, wanders outside that, uh, that sort of significance band, not, not all that rarely. Um, it's usually near zero at lag zero, 
but it kind of wanders. Uh, so in this case, I'm, I'm refreshing the random numbers over and over again. Here it's, uh, even at like zero, it's uh, 0.2 auto, uh, cross correlation. So that's outside the band. And it's pretty much outside the band for the first 20 lags or so. So just auto correlation within each series, but no actual uh, relationship between the two can confuse our cross correlation function. Um, so we'll talk about that more in the next video.